Hey guys, Slink here again with another tutorial, and today I'd like to show you how I like to make my own uh, sub bases using Ableton's uh, stock plugins. So, um, also before we get started on that, check it out. I got I got better lighting in my studio, and uh, so the camera looks a lot nicer. And I also got this sweet mic stand, so um, I can totally go like this uh, without knocking over any mics, which is pretty awesome. And uh, if you wanted to get one like this, it's the Rode. PSA1 and it's about 140 bucks Canadian um, and as for the lights I just bought these little clamp on lights and I got them up there with uh, a couple of LED bulbs that are super bright and um, basically it's like the sun in here now <laughs> but anyways let's get started with the tutorial I'll show you how to make a, a fat baseline a fat sub I should say so um, I've got this little uh, idea that I made just just for the purpose of this tutorial and it sounds like this now it's not too bad i mean i'm just using some shitty uh vengeance uh generic drums here i've got um some chords just using serum um with a couple of you know saw waves and whatever and the bass line is just a preset i found in in um serum sounds like this and I just wrote a little pattern. Um, but if you notice, the sub doesn't sound that great on that sound because it's heavily distorted and manipulated and filtered and whatever. And uh, the original uh, waveform here is really weird. So in these cases where I come up with like a, a pretty cool bass line, what I like to do is add a sub underneath it to like make sure that the sub is sounding real clean and um, and it'll really hit people in the chest when you play it at, uh, at a big system uh, at a festival or something like that. So anyways, let's drag in an operator and we'll call this uh, sub and we'll give it a sub color. I like to keep things organized. And, um, and then we'll just copy this down to here. It's the same MIDI information and we'll just solo that. And that's clearly the wrong octave. So we'll just select everything, hold shift and press down. I think we want to go with this octave and now let's start messing with the sub here so a lot of people will just go with a sine wave um, but it doesn't sound that great on on smaller systems and so what I like to do with my subs is try and add in more harmonics so that when you're listening to it on a you know a car stereo or just some shitty speakers at home um, it'll sound a little bit better like this will sound super fat at a big festivals uh, on some awesome system but it's not going to sound that great um, on other speakers because we've just got this one this one oscillator way down here actually maybe we'll go with um, this octave here um, and instead of using a sine wave, actually, what we'll do is we'll duplicate this and we'll compare the sub that we're about to make to a regular sine wave sub. Sine wave sub. Okay, and this is going to be our sweet uh, um, custom sub. So first thing I want to do is choose a triangle wave. And already you can tell that there's more harmonics there, which is kind of cool. Also, I'm going to add in another s oscillator and make that a triangle wave as well. And we'll set the course to 2 so that it's one octave higher. And then over here, if you click these little um, buttons there, the little cubes, um, you can choose this routing option, which will send both of these oscillators out separately without affecting each other in an FM synthesis sort of way. And it'll just go straight out of the plugin um, into, you know, the mix and whatever. And so what we can do now is just bring the level up on that. And you can see more and more harmonics are being added in because this is one octave higher. And while we're in here, just uh, as a force of habit, I like to set the voices to one because you never want to play more than one sub note because that would sound terrible. And also in this tab here, I like to turn the glide on and set it to about 25. And that way, if you're jamming on the keyboard um, and you've got the right channel armed, <laughs> If I hold down one note, 
and then press another note and then let go of it, it slides back up to the original note. But with glide off, hold one note down, press another note, let go of it, and the sound just stops, which is not fun. So I like to uh, set that up just when I'm jamming, trying to figure out the notes, but we already have the notes here from the bass line anyways, but just something to note, something to note. <laughs> Okay, so um, what I like to do from here is drag in a saturator and I like to start with the warm up lows preset and this will add a little bit of distortion. So that's with the saturator. And it just boosts some of those harmonics a little bit. Um, and sometimes I like to play with the drive, but that actually sounds pretty good. So let's just uh, stick with that. And then what we want to do is remove the very highest frequencies using a multiband dynamics. And the reason I do this instead of say something like this is because if you look, let me show you this really quick here. Um, see where this starts to roll off. So we're rolling off at 120 Hertz and it's rolling off maybe a third across from this bigger sort of section in the graph. If we reverse this side, you can see that it starts to roll off roughly halfway between um, these two outer, outer lines in the graph here. And what you end up with is a little bit of a groove, uh, a little bit of a dip in the signal um, around 120 hertz, which isn't a huge deal. But if you use a multiband dynamics, this kind of crossover has already been sort of optimized to sound the best which is something like this, you know, I'd set that to like 140 maybe so that this starts to roll off roughly there and this one rolls off there and then the combination of um, these frequencies and these frequencies boost up to a flat signal and anyways, multiband dynamics does that um, natively and it's really convenient, you can just drag it in and then solo the 120 hertz um, signal um, and then on the flip side on our baseline, this one over here, we want to do the reverse of that. And I'm going to put that just before the glue compressor. Um, we can do the reverse of that by soloing the mids and turning the high frequency split off. And that way we're getting everything above 120 hertz. So we've got everything above 120 hertz covered on this channel. And then down in the sub, we've got everything below 120 hertz covered. So if I just drag in another EQ so you can see what's happening you can see it sort of rolls off there and there's a couple extra harmon like a couple extra harmonics there to boost up the the signal let's try this um, one octave down actually yeah look at all that bass content that's going to be solid so the only real thing to do um, now is to just drag in our side chain. We've got a side chain channel up here. So we want to slightly duck the the sub. Um, oh yeah, let's let's compare this this sub with this sub. So we've got our sine wave sub. And actually, let me set that to the same octave. I can barely hear that low note um, on my speakers. Whereas that one you can definitely hear it, even on some shitty speakers. And, and my speakers aren't the greatest, but uh, that's the whole idea with designing the sub like this, is so that you can hear the sub on some shittier speakers. And it'll also sound tough on big um, festival um, rigs, okay? So that's the difference between adding a bit of distortion and using a triangle and, uh, and just using a, a sine wave, which is a bit boring. So yes, anyway, let's get back to um, side chaining this. So I'm just gonna steal this side chain from here and we'll paste it onto here. And then we can just um, change the, some of these settings here to make it sound good. And now if we play both of these at the same time. I don't need to side chain it that much actually. Uh, 
And this is really convenient because now we have like a separate volume control um, for the lowest sub range and it helps to really solidify your baseline in the mix. Um, and we can compare that with just the standard bass that we had. Let's go bass, no extra sub. Okay, and we'll delete this off of here. And we'll try um, listening to these different ones. So let me just turn this off. Okay, so this is with our sub. Can you hear the difference? It's huge. It's a huge difference. And I really recommend uh, adding a, a separate sub and layering that in using um, the multiband dynamics to split the signal and stuff. So let's have a listen to everything together and uh, turn these other channels on. And the added benefit of having um, something like this is you can just, you know, have a section where it's just the sub. Maybe you've got some singing coming in. And then... And you can also like make... You can sort of do like build-ups maybe. You know, something like this. Let me just see if I can do a quick build up here. And then when it drops, you, you bring the sub in, that sounds super awesome. So cool. Um, that's all for this tutorial and uh, if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see a tutorial on on my YouTube channel then leave a comment below and I'll see if I can get around to doing that. But thanks for watching guys and have a great day. Peace. <laughs>